In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. The Christians in Thessalonica knew that Jesus was coming back soon. They were eager for him. In fact, they thought that soon meant any day now. They weren't thinking in terms of years, let alone the centuries that we've had to wait. They were so convinced that Jesus was just around the corner that they were doing things like quitting their jobs. I mean, after all, if the Lord is coming back next week, why work today? But as the days stretched on, they began to realize that this was not the case. They would have to wait. They started questioning themselves. What does it mean that he's delayed? When some of the parishioners there um, started to die, they grieved endlessly. Has Jesus failed? How can the one who lived after death let anyone else die now? I thought that he defeated death. And some began to lose hope. They thought that because their loved one died before Jesus came back, that they had therefore missed out. That it would be just the living who would rise and be with Jesus forever, and those who were dead had just missed the boat. As if Jesus did not have any power over the grave. Well, their grief tended toward despair. They were now afraid of death. Death could separate them from their loved ones, maybe even eternally. Paul responds, Don't be ignorant. Don't be mistaken about this, brothers. Remember, even Jesus died. Was that the end of him? No, he rose again. That didn't hurt him. And just so he will raise all of us, it is perfectly within his power and his will to do so. He will raise them and us in our bodies to meet him in the air, just as the, the citizens of a city go out to meet their king when he arrives. Then we will be together once and for all. And what's more, we will always be with the Lord. Remember, death has been defeated. This is why Jesus came, not to remove death from us, but to defeat it. So we do not grieve as others do who have no hope, as the pagans who think that death will eventually swallow us up and then that's it. No, we grieve as Christians with a sure and certain hope in Jesus' resurrection and our own. But even though, bad, but even though Paul is critiquing their bad theology, his conclusion is not, therefore don't be ignorant. No, knowledge is not the main problem that he sees here. He moves on to something more important. Not only should you know God's word, but you must encourage one another with these words. Paul commands the Thessalonians to take what he has just taught them and to repeat it to each other for the sake of comfort. This is what God expects and commands of his congregations. In saying this, Paul assumes something that we need to talk about today, which is this. Christians should speak with one another. You guys need to talk at church and outside of church. Maybe not right this minute, but, but at church nonetheless. Now, in the New Testament, in the, in the epistles, nearly every chapter has something to say about how you, members of Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, are supposed to relate to the other members of Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. Sometimes we're tempted to think that, that being part of a church is, is just a voluntary thing, that it's, it's my choice to come to Mount Calvary. I come here, and I can sample the buffet of what Mount Calvary offers, and I can opt out of whatever I want. We're not tied or bound to these other people sitting in my pew. We're just here getting some services is all. 
And as soon as we're done, we should just run right out the back door and go on with our lives, go on with more important things. But, in fact, the Lord has knit you together as this congregation, Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. He gives the other members to you and you to them for your mutual benefit. When Paul writes his letters, he usually writes them to congregations. He knows what's going on there and how they're struggling among themselves as a congregation. And he urges them to believe and to do certain things within the context of their congregation. He assumes that life is lived within the community of a congregation. You get the point, right? And so St. Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica, this congregation for today, when you come together, encourage or comfort one another with these words. And Paul is speaking to the laity here. It's not just pastors, but all Christians have the responsibility to open their mouth and speak God's word to each other. It's incredible how important this is, too. I mean, how many of you kept coming to Mount Calvary because the people were friendly, but they also wanted to get to know you better? If we could lean into this, who else might join our community here and hear the gospel clearly? There's a lot of discouragement in the world today. Things that are going wrong. Unsettling things. Things we'd like to change. And this is true even within our church. I mean, Pastor Bauer was out for six weeks with depression and anxiety. And even now that he's back, he's still not 100% or even 80% most days. We've raised a lot of money for our capital campaign, but we've still got a long way to go to reach that $6 million. Or perhaps worse, the winter is almost upon us. And the long darkness will last for another two, three, four months. And we know what that's like. Here's the problem in this. We are tempted to believe that the future is a dark place, that things won't get better, that can't get better. But this conclusion is not just wrong, it's actually sinful. The Bible does not permit us to think that the world, that the future is going to be a dark place, but a bright one. Jesus does not give you over to despair, but to hope. Jesus is coming back soon. And even right now, he's fully in charge of everything that happens. Whatever happens is under his control and according to his will for you. He'll use it for your good. Now, sometimes Paul gets word that a congregation is not only not encouraging each other like he wants them to, but they're actively discouraging each other. He writes, he writes to the Galatians, but if you bite and devour one another, watch out lest you be consumed by each other. He writes to the Corinthians, for I fear that perhaps when I come, I may find you not as I want, and you may find me not as you want that perhaps there may be quarreling, jealousy, anger, hostility, slander, gossip, conceit, disorder. He writes to the Thessalonians, therefore encourage one another with these words. That is, don't discourage one another that perhaps the dead may not be raised or that Jesus may not be coming back. Not only is that wrong to do, is harmful and it's sinful. Instead of this, dear members of Mount Calvary, let's resolve, let's, let's resolve ourselves to comfort our brothers and sisters who are sitting next to us and in front of us. Let's not allow ourselves and each other to dwell in fear and misery. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And remember, Jesus called you the light of the world, a city set on a hill, a lamp that lightens all who are in the house. And you yourselves need this encouragement too. 
it would be not only naive, but even arrogant to say, oh, I can go and encourage a few people on my own. On my own. That, that's what Pastor says. That, that's okay. I can do that. But I don't need any of that encouragement for myself. No, I'm fine. I can manage the Christian life all on my own. Thank you very much. No, if the Lord has given us to each other, it's because we need each other, whether we feel like it or not. You too are prone to fear and discouragement, whether because of the long winter or the dark night of the soul. You need to be encouraged. You need to be strengthened and uplifted. You need to be shown the beauty of Christ's joy breaking forth in this dark world. And we are all here to help you with that. The Thessalonians were becoming afraid of death. They were afraid of losing each other and missing out on heaven. They were afraid that perhaps Jesus wasn't going to come back for a very long time, and by then it would be too late, because they would all die and miss out. They were being cowards. So Paul says, first, I'll tell you the truth about the resurrection, and then I want you to encourage each other with these words. Paul does not say, make each other feel good. No, it's, you're not responsible to change someone else's emotions, and that would be terrible advice in some situations. But instead, Paul says, tell each other the truth about what the Bible says. And let that word of God take root in their hearts and give them hope. This is what we at Mount Calvary call life together. Not only being friendly, but knowing each other and sharing God's word with each other to encourage each other. Sharing your hopes, your joys, your sufferings. Sharing the good news of God's salvation with each other as we see it in the Bible and as we see it even in our own lives in bits and pieces. Now, we're not asking you to walk around with index cards, quoting Bible verses at people in order to give them a pep talk. Not necessarily. But there are some things that you can do to begin to do what God commands you, to encourage one another with these words. For instance, you can come to church just a bit early and actually talk with people. Get to know each other. What you'll find is that other people also come to church because they need to receive something from God. There's something lacking, something missing, something they need. And so your, con and so your conversation will easily flow from talking about the weather to talking about more important things. And then you'll have the chance to encourage each other with God's word. You'll have to say things like, oh, I'm sorry about your mom. But remember God's promise. You won't be separated for long. Jesus will come back soon. I'll keep you in my prayers. What encouragement is that? And another way to encourage each other is to come to Bible study. In Bible study, not only do we get to learn more about God's word, but we also get to learn more about each other. Because as, as we talk about how God's word applies in our lives, we actually talk about the things going on in our lives. The people we know, the help they need. Next, consider inviting members of Mount Calvary into your house. Now, it doesn't have to be, I, I, and by the way, this is what the New Testament means when it encourages and even commands hospitality. It doesn't have to be a big, fancy meal. It doesn't have to be a deep conversation either. Just share a beer if that's your thing. Talk about life. You'll be surprised at how this conversation can turn into encouragement in Christ. Now, all this assumes that you know each other's names. <laughs> it, it can be difficult if you've come into church for years, if you've said hi to people for years, you know their face, but oh, their name just isn't quite there. I get it. <laughs> I get it. It's really hard when you grow up in a church and you leave and you come back and you're expected to know everyone. <laughs> it, it just doesn't work like that. And so you might have to go up to someone you've seen and said hi to a bunch of times and said, I'm so sorry. Pastor, pastor put me onto this. Can you please remind me of your name? It's fine. I'm giving you the excuse, the excuse right now. Really. I mean, it's either that or grab a pictorial directory off the back. We put some extra copies out there today. Because, I mean, who wants, who wants the harder way of actually saying something, right? 
but it's helpful to know each other's names so that you can encourage each other, so that you can pray for each other. That's good. It's a necessary foundation for this. Dear friends in Christ, Jesus died and rose for you, and you also will die and rise. These are beautiful words and a wonderful encouragement from St. Paul. This is the kind of thing that we get to share with each other, with the people around you who are hurting just as much as you are and who need that encouragement as well. You may not yet know their struggles, their fears, their name maybe, but you can listen and share and encourage them in Christ. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.